What's up guys? So Canandaigua has been talked about a lot on this channel and for good reason too. It's our hometown and we absolutely love the town. But before you pack your bags and move your way over here, let me talk about the pros and the cons of living in Canandaigua. Let's go. What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Anthony and I am with the American Home Team and the Living in the Finger Lakes team here in upstate New York. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you're notified every Tuesday and Thursday that I release a new video. And with that being said, as much as I love making these videos for you guys on everything Living in the Finger Lakes, I would love even more to help you with all of your real estate needs. So that being said, that number and that email that's popping up on your screen right now, be sure to email, text, call, whatever. I am the guy that answers those emails, texts, and phone calls. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And before I get into it, what you're going to realize is that a lot of the pros and cons of Canandaigua are going to be some of the pros and cons of a lot of the other areas in the Finger Lakes. And that is just because really the Finger Lakes area is just so popular and it's so amazing for so many different reasons. And you know, the, the climate is just about the same because it's the Finger Lakes, it's the one region in New York. So it, it's always gonna have the same weather just about. The things that will make up the difference is the size of the town, maybe the schools, right? and. Uh, I guess proximity to the lake. So, Canandaigua was established in 1791 and is one of the more historic towns here in the Finger Lakes. What I think is so great about it, going right into the pros of Canandaigua, is of course we have to talk about the natural beauty of Canandaigua. Located south of Rochester and on the north shore of Canandaigua Lake, Canandaigua is one of the more popular towns here in the Finger Lakes region. Canandaigua Lake is one of the more popular lakes in the Finger Lakes region. Um, it's also one of the larger lakes. And so just the uh, landscape of Canandaigua, um, it has rolling hills. And so it just makes it so beautiful. And then in the fall time, uh, you're talking about the fall foliage, which with the rolling hills and you know the, the valleys and mountainsides, it's just the colors are amazing. And when the leaves fall, it's just, people actually travel from across the country just to come to Canandaigua and see the fall foliage. It's actually a really big thing here. So just the natural beauty of Canandaigua and then there's all sorts of uh, lookouts that you can go up to and see uh, just amazing views of the lake as well as some hikes and stuff that you can also see views of the lake and um, waterfalls and whatnot. So just the natural beauty of Canandaigua is bar none. You can't, you really can't beat it. There's very few pa places that um, I have been to or seen that can match the uh, the natural beauty of Canandaigua and that's a fact that <laughs> that is so that's a fact for me I should say but I, I really do believe that it's you know I lived in Hawaii and Hawaii is beautiful for many reasons lived in North Carolina for a little bit that's beautiful for many reasons as well um, but actually if you get over to the Smokies um, like in Asheville North Carolina you're probably going to get a lot of the same kind of natural beauty over there. But we do have the lakes here. So obviously Canandaigua Lake, one of the more beautiful lakes, one of the more most popular lakes. So point number one for the pros is going to be the natural beauty. And rolling into point number two, we're talking about outdoor activities. So with that natural beauty, a lot of the outdoor activities are kind of basically what you do is you're going to go on a hike up the rolling hills that I just talked about. And you're going to go and you're going to look at the lake. You're going to go look at the sites, right? So a lot of the outdoor activities are kind of centered around um, that natural beauty aspect. Um, we do have skiing, we cross country skiing. You can go biking, hiking, running, kayaking, boating. You know, there's all sorts of outdoor activities that you can do in Canandaigua. There's really no end to the outdoor activities that you can do here. So um, there's also... Uh, what do you call those like the adventure parks where they have like the bridges through the trees and things like that so there's really cool things um, that you can do with your family there's Roseland Water Park right in Canandaigua as well so in at Roseland it's obviously a water park so there's big slides there's little slides 
it, there's there's really fun for the whole family so um, point number two is going to be the outdoor activities and you just can't beat it that matched with the natural beauty of Canandaigua you can't match it moving right along into point number three one of the pros is quality education and so because of my job here I need to be careful with this but according to niche.com and as well as I, I have family that work in the Canandaigua school district so according to them as well Canandaigua is one of the top schools in the area um, for quality education and I know just from my personal experience going to Canandaigua the sports were great um, the extracurriculars were great there was always great field trips um, the teachers did a really good job at making sure that you understood the topics that they were teaching and the average student to teacher ratio it's going to be like 15 to 20 per one uh, every one teacher so it's really not bad you do get quite a bit of like one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher if you need that or if you want that um, there's all sorts of extra study halls things like that that you can go and get the extra help that you might need you know I, I was always bad at math so I would always go in and get the extra uh, help from math and just the school allowed that because it had you know I had a graduating class of about 300 so not a huge class not a not a tiny class either there's schools around here that have graduating classes of 20 or 30 or you know a hundred we had a graduating class of 300 and then on the other side there's graduating classes of about a thousand so we're not real big but we're not real small it's right in the middle and that is part of what's so great about it but according to niche.com and my family members who work in the school district they're all saying that Canandaigua is one of the top quality schools in the area moving right along the next pro about living in Canandaigua is going to be the strong sense of community guys Canandaigua has one of the better senses of community that I've ever been a part of and really you know the the residents here take pride in the history of Canandaigua whether it be championship titles for say football or for soccer or any other sport swimming or something like that or just any of the other things that have happened in the town uh, slavery the um, Underground Railroad passed through here a lot of people take pride in that there's actually a museum down on Westlake Road that you can go see where they were actually able to hide the slaves and protect them so that they could you know make their escape and so there was a lot of history here and because of that the residents really take pride in their hometown Canandaigua just everybody seems to know everybody it is a small town and because of that you know there is a con where maybe everybody knows everyone's business, but as long as you're a good person, that is not a bad thing, right? As long as you're not doing shady stuff, it's not a bad thing. If you need a job or you, you know, there's something that you desire, it's easy to get people to rally behind you. If somebody is ill or somebody has some sort of issue, it's easy for people to rally behind them and really support them whether it be funding or you know just emotional support or something like that so the sense of community is really top tier again I've never been part of anything really better besides the Marine Corps the Marine Corps I think is the only other place that I've been a part of a community better than Canandaigua um, and that's just being honest I'm not gonna say Canandaigua is the best sense of community in the world because I don't know but just the things that I've been a part of, the Marine Corps is the only thing that, that beats the town of Canandaigua and its uh, uh, sense of community. So that's pretty cool. Of course, I'm a little bit biased because I was born and raised here. But that being said, you know, I have lived in multiple other parts of the country and traveled to multiple uh, places across the world. So Canandaigua, you know, I keep coming back to and there's a reason for it. And the community is one of those big reasons. All right, so moving right along, we're going to get into the cons now of living in Canandaigua. And so the very first thing that I'm going to mention is going to be the town politics. And, you know, you get this in any small town, right? There's roughly 10 to 12,000 people in Canandaigua. So Canandaigua, the politics, um, like the small politics, I'm not talking about the actual, the mayor, the town supervisor, the board, whatever. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is like within the school system or, you know, just in the town, right? If 
you know people, then you've got automatic ins or that you're safe from whatever, right? So I, I remember uh, going to school and look, I, I was the beneficiary of some of the, the politics here in Canandaigua. My family was known decently well enough to be able to take advantage of some of these things unknowingly to me, right, when I was going through school. But the things like, uh, for example, sports, if you're on a sports team, we'll say football because I played football. If your parents were known by the coaches or maybe if you had a sibling that was known by the coaches or something like that, you were probably going to get a starting spot on the team and a starting position on the team. So like... I was a wide receiver and I got the job over a few other wide receivers that were also good. Now, I think that I was better, which is, I, I like to believe meritocracy is why I got that job. But it's hard when you hear about uh, small town politics, it's hard not to think that maybe you got the job because of your parents or because of your siblings or something like that, right? So I'm just not a big fan of uh, school politics. I, I just really don't like it. I think it's unfair to a lot of people and even though I was the beneficiary of some school politics, right? I, I hate that. I just really don't like it. I think that, you know, life should be a meritocracy and if you're a good person and, you, and you're the best one for the job, you should get that job. And, you know, just the, the political nature of a lot of these small towns kind of hinders that. I think that people get put in uh, positions for the wrong reasons because maybe they have a prominent parent or because maybe they have a little bit more money or whatever the case is instead of being a meritocracy. So I think first and foremost, the, my number one con for Canandaigua is going to be the small town politics. Again, you're going to get it with small town most of the time, but in Canandaigua, since I grew up here and I lived it, I saw it. And um, I know firsthand that it can be a detriment. And um, I know that that is one of the few things that makes people want to move away from Canandaigua into maybe a larger area just so they don't get the small town politics. And so moving right along, kind of with that small town politics, we're going to talk about limited job opportunities. So I say that it goes along with the small town politics just because the people who are well known in the community are likely the ones who have the jobs. Now, that being said, there are jobs like you got Walmart, you have AT&T, you have a Verizon store, you have restaurants and things like that. But if you want a well-paying job in Canandaigua, chances are you're going to have to know somebody. So if you're a, we'll call it a transplant, you're relocating here and you want a job in Canandaigua, just because it's so small, there's not a ton of opportunities that will present themselves that don't have some sort of, I guess, town politic tied to it. Now, that's not always the case. I want to say that the rule is that the job opportunities are limited just because it's a small town. There's just not a ton of corporate here, right? But like I said, there is Walmart, there is Lowe's, there is McDonald's and your fast food chains, and then there's Verizon and there's other sales jobs. Um, there's marketing companies, things like that. But a majority of your professional jobs and stuff, they're very small. They maybe have three, four attorneys on them. So if you have professional job, you may just need to travel to one of the outside towns. So a, a, maybe a place like Victor or a place like uh, Pittsford or even Rochester, right? Only a 15 minute drive uh, to Rochester. So a lot of people that work in Canandaigua or live in Canandaigua rather, they work up toward the city somewhere. And again, it's just because small town, limited job opportunities. And then moving along into, this is gonna be the last point that I am gonna say for the con. And I normally we would add on weather to the Finger Lakes, right, being a con, because the weather is unpredictable. It's, it is what it is, right? But I'm tired of putting the weather into a con for a town in, New, in upstate New York. We just, weather, it is what it is. So, you know, it's, it's not good nor is it bad. It's kind of in between. So instead, I'm gonna make the last con here is lack of diversity in Canandaigua. And I, I will say that according to any of the statistical websites online that you can find, cityneighborhood.org or niche.com or any of these other things. Canandaigua is one of the least diverse towns in the area. And if you're one that doesn't necessarily care about diversity, you just want like 
good schools, you just want a nice town, you want a safe area to live or whatever, that's great. Canandaigua could be the place for you. If diversity is super important to you though, you might want to get into one of the outlying towns. You know, maybe a place like Victor that has a little bit more people. Or a place like Pittsburgh or Brighton or uh, closer to Rochester, maybe Greece or Irondequoit or, you know, some of these other areas. Canandaigua is just not that diverse. It's just not. And it was something that was, you know, prevalent in heavy top conversation when I was graduating high school and, and even just recently during the pandemic um, and we had... You know, the, the past couple years when we had all these social issues that we were talking about and for a variety of reasons, but we were talking about it and just being from these areas, you notice that Canandaigua is not as diverse as many other places. I'm not saying that's neither good nor bad. I'm indifferent on things, but I recognize that there are people out there that this really matters to them. I help many home buyers who are looking in and around the Canandaigua area and diversity is important to them. And so they see what's in Canandaigua and then they choose to go somewhere else because diversity is so important to them. So if this is something that matters to you, then maybe Canandaigua is not the spot for you. If you're indifferent about it, if you really don't care, it is what it is, then Canandaigua is great. And that's not to say that if you're a minority, don't move here. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying that statistically speaking, Canandaigua is not very diverse. And I only bring that up because I know that a lot of people, um, it matters to them when they're making a decision to raise their kids or to bring their family to. So just had to throw that in there as the last con. And so if you notice, there are five pros to living in Canandaigua and only three cons. Of course, there's gonna be more pros, more cons than that. This is just a short list for the sake of the length of the video, but Canandaigua really is a great place to live. Growing up here, I didn't think that I really liked it because the town was still up and coming back in the early 2000s. But having lived here for a long time now, well, the better half of say 24 years or so, minus four years that I was in the Marine Corps, Canandaigua's been great. It's treated me very well, treated our families very well, and it's a great place to get back to and any, really anywhere in the Finger Lakes, but Canandaigua I think is the prime spot for a lot of nature lovers, a lot of people that want to experience the lake life and the life in the Finger Lakes, right? Anybody who's an outdoor enthusiast is gonna love this spot. Anyone who wants a thriving downtown, Canandaigua is also the spot. It's a great place, it's a great place to be born and raised and I'm fortunate for being born and raised here. Canandaigua is just amazing. And if you've been wondering this whole time how to spell Canandaigua, besides in the description and the title, you can see it. It's C-A-N-A-N-D-A-I-G-U-A. -A -A and funny story is in high school, um, for all the high school athletics, you know, I played football, so the cheerleaders were always behind us and they had a cheer that spelled out Canandaigua. And that cheer was always the number one way that when I'm spelling it, I kind of sing the cheerleading song, as funny as that is. And it's how I remember Canandaigua. And it is a um, an old native area. So Canandaigua comes from the Canandarque tribe. And it is historic. And no, we are not Canada. All of my friends, all of the people I've ever talked to that I tell them from Canandaigua, they always think I'm from Canada. Or when people call me on the phone and they try and confirm an address or something and they can't pronounce Canandaigua, they say Canada. It's like, no, it's not Canada. We're about two and a half hours away from Canada, but we are close enough, so sure, might as well call us Can Canadian. I don't know, whatever. That being said, guys, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you're notified every Tuesday and Thursday that I release a new video. And as much as I love making these videos, I would love even more to help you with all your real estate needs. So that number and that email that's popping up on the bottom of your screen, make sure you email, call, and text. I am the guy that answers those emails, calls, and texts. So until the next video, we'll see you soon. Bye.